So, Bloomberg, as talks between United States President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un flourished last year, South Korean President Moon Jae-in enjoyed international praise for bringing him together. Now that they've split, he's facing pressure to get them back to the table. Mr. Trump's decision to walk away from his Hanoi summit with Mr. Kim continues to reverberate a month later in Seoul, where Mr. Moon has come under fire from the conservative opposition for accepting the North Korean leader's disarmament pledges. The Kim regime has hit him from the other side, withdrawing staff from a new joint liaison office last week and criticizing South Korea as cowardly for backing its U.S. allies' stance against easing sanctions. The ball is now in Moon's court to meet Kim Jong-un's get exactly which sanctions North Korea wants lifted in response to exactly what type of denuclearization measures the U.S. wants to see, said Mr. Chong Seong Chang, vice president of research planning at the Sejong Institute. Moon has been cornered into having to persuade Kim Jong-un to sign up for a big deal. Mr. Moon has repeatedly had to play the role of mediator since he took office in May 2017, amid escalating threats of war between Mr. Trump and Mr. Kim. The longtime advocate of reconciliation with North Korea has staked much of his presidency on his ability to put the two men on the path to peace, including a surprise trip north of the border to meet Mr. Kim and help rescue their first summit last year in Singapore. Kim's options The failure of the Hanoi meeting on February 28, however, raised new doubts about what such summits will accomplish with Mr. Trump administration officials suggesting they are willing to wait out North Korea as it languishes under sanctions. With few options, short of resuming weapons tests that might provoke Mr. Trump, Mr. Kim has instead signaled a willingness to threaten Mr. Moon's diplomatic progress. North Korea has directed its ire at South Korea in a string of commentaries since the summit, accusing it of undermining the cooperation agreement Mr. Kim and Mr. Moon signed in April and September. South Korea holding on to these sanctions is the same thing as putting shackles on its own hands, the propaganda website Euromin Zokiri said on Monday, March 25. Last Friday, North Korean officials withdrew from a liaison office South Korea set up six months ago on the northern side of the border. While a handful of North Korean staff returned to the office on Monday, the message was delivered. North Korea is calling Moon out on his passive approach, said Mr. Kang Jun Young, an international relations professor at Hankook University of Foreign Studies. It wants South Korea to react independently from the United States. The collapse of talks has further pushed back Mr. Moon's plans to bring Mr. Kim to Seoul for the first ever visit by a North Korean leader, a trip originally planned for last year. It has also energized South Korea's anemic opposition, fueling critical floor speeches by conservative lawmakers and editorials by right-leaning newspapers. There's nothing as embarrassing as North Korea trying to try in our country by going back and forth with their options to leave or come back to the office, Liberty Korea Party spokesman Min Kyung-wook said on Monday. Mr. Moon's approval rate ticked up one percentage point to 45% in a Gallup Korea poll last week, after falling to a record low of 44% in the previous survey. The president himself has said little about North Korea since the immediate aftermath of the summit, when he praised Mr. Kim's offer to dismantle a key nuclear production complex as an irreversible disarmament step, splitting with the Trump administration's assessment. More important, this is part of a process to reach a higher level of agreement, Mr. Moon said on March 1. Now our role has become even more important, what Mr. Moon can do to bridge the gap between Mr. Trump and Mr. Kim remains to be seen. Since the summit, North Korea has not responded to South Korea's repeated requests for working-level talks, let alone any one-on-one -on -one meetings. Mr. Kim could be holding out for some signal that Mr. Moon will either press Mr. Trump for concessions or take his own unilateral steps to restore economic ties. 
South Korea has been pressing for the resumption of two inter-Korean projects in North Korea, a joint factory park and a mountain resort, that have been frozen due to political acrimony, as well as joint rail and energy projects. Such steps are unlikely because it would undermine South Korea's alliance with the U.S., which has guaranteed the country's security for almost 70 years. Time is not in North Korea's favor, said Professor Kang. North Korea needs money, but South Korea is in a place where it cannot help North Korea without Seoul changing its strategy.